I think it's better because it, there's more power. There's more power in numbers. You know, you you gotta stand tall. You know, divide it, you're gonna fall. You know, it. You have to be more than conquerors. I think. If it would have been just one person, how could that person have won against a corrupt government or school board? How could that person have stood alone? In 1947, the Mendez et al. v. Westminster case desegregated schools in California, being one of the first cases of its kind in its use of social sciences and questioning of the 14th Amendment. But what many don't know is that it took the work of five families working side by side to make such an important change in history. The case was actually a class action lawsuit that included the Guzman, Palomino, Estrada, Mendez, and Ramirez family each with a different story on what pushed them to fight for equality. Before the historic change, students of Mexican ancestry were forced to attend separate schools that claimed to be the same as a white American school. The truth was that the Mexican schools were not designed to prepare their students for college. In fact, many were encouraged to work in their fields and not complete high school. What made the rule even more out of the ordinary was that those registered as Spanish were allowed to attend white American schools because they were technically of European descent, therefore making them white Americans. The Guzman family found lawyer David Marcus, and on March 1, 1945, Gonzalo Mendez, Tomás Estrada, William Guzman, and Frank Palomino signed a petition which alleged that four Orange County school districts segregated children of Mexican and Latin descent in violation of the Constitution. Lorenzo Ramirez was the only Mexican citizen of the five families, and therefore he did not sign the petition. However, he was a plaintiff in the official Mendez et al. v. Westminster case. The official case was a class action lawsuit between the five families, which is one of the reasons why it became so powerful in court. We personally interviewed Michael Ramirez and Beverly Guzman Gallegos to better understand why their families needed to work together. I think it's better because there's more power. There's more power in numbers. You know, you, you gotta stand tall, you know, divide it, you're gonna fall. You know, it, you have to be more than conquerors, I think. If it would have been just one person, how could that person have won against a corrupt government? Or school board how could that person have stood alone he needed help he needed us he needed people like our family our parents to stand with him yeah the thing was is i believe that if they only had one family that they could have lost the the, the lawyer was smart enough david mark was smart enough that he knew that if he went in with one family he would most likely lose because the uh, school district could argue against whatever argument they wanted to use why that family couldn't go to that school. And then if another family had a separate lawsuit, they could argue, make another excuse why that family couldn't go there and they would lose that lawsuit. But by putting them all together as a class action, he could show that it was a conspiracy, that they were all doing this on, for one purpose. And the purpose was to keep the Mexican kids from going to the white school. But a month after signing the petition, the Orange County Council submitted a motion asking for the petition to be dismissed. Instead, the judge ruled for a trial. It was established in the pretrial by defense attorney George F. Holden that segregation in schools was a mere conspiracy. However, it became clear that it was in fact about race when he described three of the schools as schools that served whites and when he labeled non-English speaking Mexicans as handicapped. Luckily, David Marcus took the information from the pretrial and used it to his advantage by calling a bilingual mother of four up as his first witness. Manuela Ochoa established that even Mexican Americans who were not quote unquote handicapped had been forced to all Mexican schools. Throughout the trial, each of the witnesses shared their experiences with segregation within the school district, many of which were children that experienced the extreme prejudice firsthand. On February 18, 1946, Senior District Judge Paul J. McCormick, sitting in Los Angeles, presided at the trial and ruled in favor of Mendez et al. 
This proved separate schools for Mexicans to be an unconstitutional denial of equal protection. The school district then appealed the Ninth Federal Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco, which upheld Judge McCormick's decision, finding that the segregation practices violated the 14th Amendment, which states the following. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. As a result of the case, each of the school districts paid $56 to the families that sued the corresponding schools. Today, that would be the equivalent of about $800. Once the case was finalized, Governor Earl Warren desegregated all public schools in California, as well as a few public spaces. California became the first state to desegregate schools. We spoke to Philip Chacon, a longtime California resident, to better understand what it was like to go from segregated to desegregated schools. Well, once, you, once you bring us together and teach us together, it opens doors and opportunities for everybody. And you can compete and, 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 uh, and go wherever you want to go and go to whatever school you want and not have to be shunned away just because you're Mexican or you're black or you're Asian, whatever. In other words, the doors open, you come in. But not everything went smoothly after the case. Many of the families had to deal with being blacklisted from jobs due to their involvement. In addition, many schools still discriminated the students of color. In this photo, we can see a yearbook photo taken of students of color. The second photo was taken with a few white American students dispersed throughout to show the public that integration was in full effect. Nonetheless, the Mendez et al. versus Westminster case was not only impactful to California, but to the country. It inspired the Brown et al. versus Board of Education to be a class action lawsuit to clearly show that the school boards had a common goal, to segregate students of color from white American students. In addition, David Marcus was one of the first attorneys to use social sciences as an argument in court. He argued that by separating the students, they would feel inferior to white Americans, therefore affecting their overall work performance in school. Since the early 1940s, schools have become immensely more inclusive. We spoke to Anthony Saba, the executive director of a local charter school in Orange County, to see just how inclusive modern schools are thanks to attorney David Marcus and the Guzman, Palomino, Estrada, Mendez, and Ramirez family. And except into the school? Well, it's a random lottery, so it doesn't matter if you're black, brown, white, green, purple, orange, or lavender, or rich, or poor, or none of it matters. Everybody has the same chance of getting in. Unless you're a foster youth, foster youth, you get to automatically enroll. Uh, I think we do a lot of stuff. As a staff, we do do trainings around inclusivity. We have a diversity and inclusion club as well. And we also have club representations of different types of groups of students, like LGBTQ students, who are sometimes underrepresented at certain schools, but not ours. In 2011, Sylvia Mendez, daughter of Gonzalo Mendez, was recognized for sharing her parents' story by receiving a Medal of Freedom from President Barack Obama. Lorenzo Ramirez was honored with a library named after him at Santiago Canyon College, and in 2016, a statue was created to thank him once more. Although the other plaintiffs have not gotten enough recognition, we still thank them for their bravery and determination, because without them working side by side, they would have not been able to break segregation's barriers. <laughs>